Hey everybody, this is Tony, the Geeky Agent from here in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, specifically out here in Bimbrook, working with Remax and bringing you some fun stuff to talk about. We are, this is episode five of the Lunchbox. I didn't even realize we'd get this far, much less uh, have an ongoing little show here, but it looks like it's working. Uh, I am bringing on my good friend uh, and uh, not business partner, but a business contact, I guess you can call it. Uh, my friend Linda Sinelli, she is a mobile mortgage advisor with CIBC, the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, for all you people who have been around long enough. Uh, so she will be coming on. We'll be talking about a bunch of different things. Very brief conversation today, maybe 15 minutes up to half an hour, depending on what we talk about. But I've known Linda for quite some time, but I'll let her sort of introduce herself and let you know who she is and what she does and all that sort of stuff. So if you'll give me half a second, I will get her out of the waiting room. Linda, how Tony, you doing? how's it going? Very good, very good. I just introduced you, like I said, you are a mobile mortgage advisor with CIBC, which I let everybody know is the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce for those <laughs> older folks like me who remember those days. Um, yeah, so I just let them know we are going to be going through a few things today, but to get things started, I thought, you know, you can kind of introduce yourself and I'll, I will take a back seat for a few minutes. You can kind of give your background, like full disclosure for everybody out there. Linda, I've known for a long time. Uh, <laughs> she was at Canada Trust at the time when I got my very first mortgage. So she actually approved my very first home purchase mortgage thing um, back in the day, whenever that was, I think it was like 2001. Sure. Around there somewhere. I think it was around there. Somewhere along there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was the one buying the house. So there you go. So I was I was yeah. a, I was around then too. <laughs> I'm not That's a, right. I'm not a millennial by any stretch. Um, but yeah, so I'll give you I'll give you a couple of minutes. You can kind of let us know what you're doing, where where you got started, how long you've been in the business, and what you're up to these days. Awesome. Um, thank you, Tony. Uh, by the way, you have a voice for radio. No offense to the video, but kind of total face voice too. for I for know. You know, um, so full disclosure, I uh, started with Canada Trust back in 1987 and um, it became TD Bank thereafter and joined the national group of chartered banks really is what happened back then. Um, when you and I had our first interaction together with the mortgage piece, it was the days of manual lending. If anybody remembers those words where um, people like myself had what we call lending limits. So we were, we were able to approve mortgages pretty much on the spot with uh, very, very, very slim documentation compared to today. Um, today we have quick processes and great streamlining of documents and mobile, mobile service that is fantastic as well. Uh, I've been in the uh, retail banking business for over 28 years and in the mobile business probably about four years now. Um, I've been doing the uh, mobile role and it's interesting every year it's evolved. COVID has had a huge impact in this evolution. Um, for my business, I would say for the positive because a lot of our technologies improved, you know, what would have been a three year plan for improvement back in the day has now become the five month improvement and yeah. can we do three months. Um, yeah. So a lot of this technology has has been pushed forward as top priority, mm -hmm. which helps our customers who want that quick service, online service, sure. um, and don't necessarily want to meet face-to-face. -face. I'm flexible. I can do both um, mm -hmm. under COVID protocols, and I'm you know, willing to meet with clients under those protocols, sure. and I'm willing to service live on uh, Zoom if we are, or Teams, mm -hmm. or... Yeah. Simple email. Yeah. I mean, like we were, you're saying, I would think we're sort of in the same boat because the technology, even for us in real estate was sort of heading in that same direction, right? Like mm -hmm. we got, you know, digital, we were finally approved to do digital signatures about, you know, feels like about four or five years ago now uh, mm -hmm. after a long wait. And then, uh, yeah, especially, you know, I think these are things that we were already kind of starting to use. I've been doing video for a long time, but not mm -hmm. so much like Zoom meetings and stuff. Yes. Uh, but once COVID showed up and our offices were shut down, then of course we we embraced a new technology and tried to figure out very quickly how to use it effectively, uh, yes. so that we can get business done. Because as you know, and I know, and most people who've been watching this for a while know, uh, real estate's never stopped. I mean, the, mm -hmm. if anything, the market's just gone absolutely insane for whatever mm -hmm. reason. We had a bit of a slowdown. We first shut down middle of March last year, almost exactly a year ago. 
And then so March, April into May was a bit of a slowdown, uh, quite a significant slowdown here in Hamilton, but then very quickly picked up again right after that. And the summer has just been insane. Um, So what... what have, what have you been seeing in terms of like when you're getting approached by customers or if I refer a client to you, sure. um, what kind of conversations are you having with them? Uh, like what, what kind of things are they asking for? I know refinancing is big. Um, yes, it a is. lot of people trying to get ready to buy their first homes, a lot of people downsizing, like what are sort of the, the two or three big things that people are approaching you asking you about? Mm-hmm. So, so the biggest elephant in the room, if you would, for both yourself and myself is how do I qualify for a mortgage when there's these competitions happening on bidding? Where can, what resources do I have to tap into? Um, Yes, I know I need 5% down, but what else do I need? Can I go above my pre-approved amount? How do I go above my pre-approved amount in order to secure my position and purchase this house that I'm looking at? Um, that's always the big question that I get either from repeat buyers or first time home buyers. And the biggest challenge is what are your resources? What can you tap into? Who is available to you? Some clients aren't aware that we can use, you know, gift gifted money under um, circumstances of family relationship. Uh, You know, have you considered or would you take in a renter? to help with your mm-hmm. mortgage payments, which mm-hmm. now the, the rental um, market is, is taken off nuts. just like the, yep. the buying market. <laughs> like yeah. some, you know, I, I, based on my depth, I looked at some of those rental prices. It's like, wow, you could have owned two homes on that budget, right? Like, yeah, yeah. And but that's, do you that's have kind of resource? what I'm getting asking for, asked for too quite a bit yeah. is people now looking for places, number one, uh, space. Right. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people are trying to move up and it's getting uh, condos are kind of a bit slow right now. They, I mean, they have grown overall. I think that's because of a lot of new construction inventory coming on. But yeah. if you're looking at existing condos, a lot of the prices have remained pretty flat for the year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then smaller townhouses, surprisingly enough, like I'm out here in, in a smaller one for myself here in Bimbrook. Mm-hmm. And the bigger units um, with backyards and full basements and, and space are selling like hotcakes but something that's a little bit smaller is taking a bit longer. So people are definitely looking to move up into a bigger space because they're stuck. Um, but yeah, the renting aspect, a lot of people are now approaching, like that's always kind of been there. There's been a small percentage of people that are like, Hey, you know what? I, I wouldn't mind having a house if I can maybe rent out the basement, make a few, a few bucks to help pay the mortgage kind of thing. But that's just become mm-hmm. even more prevalent now. Like people are really looking at like, you know, especially with prices going as high as they have, they're like, you know, if I could rent out my basement apartment for a thousand bucks a month or twelve hundred bucks a month, that goes a long way to helping me cover the, the increased cost of these houses, right? Um, where do you like? So people are approaching you and looking for that, so they'll get their pre-approval. So for mm-hmm. people who are unfamiliar, you know, I know we've discussed this before here. Mm-hmm. We'll send a client to you. You kind of talk with them and say, look, based on your income, how much of a down payment you have, your credit history, etc. You know, here's kind of the ballpark that you should be looking at in terms of prices, right? Mm -hmm. With your down payment plus the mortgage we're we're willing to give you, you should probably look up to $500,000, for example, right? Mm -hmm. So now they're getting out and a lot of buyers, um, they're looking right at 500, not always Mm -hmm. realizing that a lot of these houses are priced low to attract attention. And mm-hmm. they'll most likely sell for more than 500000 mm-hmm. So if they come back, and you mentioned a couple of things, um, they come back and they said, okay, we still have the same down payment and we wanted to buy this house, but now we're at 520 or 525 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What are what, like, What's the option at that point? Like you said, you mentioned gifted funds. Like how would that procedure happen? Mm-hmm. Well, without getting into too much detail based on Mm. our timeline here. It's basically um, say a parent has Mm $10,000 and they were going to give to their child for the purpose of a wedding. I'm Italian. So that's what it would be (laughs) kind of thing for me. And you could say, mom, dad, I want to use it now. (laughs) If that's still an option and have frank discussions, because I find that families who, because I'm thinking of the first time home buyer, especially um, who have these open finance conversations are very successful, right? From 
the purchase point to the parents' succession planning for their estate, if you would, sure. um, and their greater wealth. So yeah. you know what? Um, it makes sense because real estate is always an appreciated value. Yeah, and it's good um, to have those conversations, like you're saying. Exactly. Like it's, a lot of times, it it's not something that most families really discuss openly. Um, exactly. but like you said, you're getting into that. And a lot of times, you, like you said, I'm Italian too, and partly. And so like parents want to surprise you with a big gift on your wedding day back when we sure. used to have really big weddings. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's kind <laughs> Large of... Large gatherings. You, yeah, you kind of know that that's kind of in the cards. So maybe having that discussion ahead of time and saying, you know what, there's a maybe a better way we could use this money that would benefit everybody, right? And so they would give that money. It has to be in the account for so much time. I know there's a gift letter type thing yep. to yep. show where Full it's coming disclosure. from. Exactly, because yeah. the, the down payment has to be non-borrowed funds. Right. So, and you know what, a lot of parents, um, you know, that I've worked with, with their kids, kids per se, mm -hmm. um, they're willing to do that because it's better than asking for money for that car yeah. that when or, you drive um, off that lot, <laughs> right? Oh yeah. Engagement ring loans. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so it's a practical gift if you would, sure, that sure. continues to give. And so, so they look at those kinds of pieces. Um, the renter, would you mm -hmm. be willing to rent the basement or a room or whatever the case may be? Because, you know, it's very favorable right now, much like the selling market mm -hmm. um, in terms of what you can get for a rent. And um, the other piece is, do you have a partner that you're willing to come on board with? You mm -hmm. figure out all the legalities of, of the partnership and, you know, yeah. how much money goes in. I don't deal with that. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it's all it's all up to them. But is there someone that you're considering yep. that could be part of this project and you guys yeah. figure it out with your lawyer or and whatever we're actually it is. Just, uh, I just actually did that with uh, two, two gentlemen. Uh, mm -hmm. They actually work together. They've known each other for a long time. And they decided uh, the one gentleman and then the other uh, client with his, um, I guess, common law wife, girlfriend, uh, mm -hmm. are going to live in this house together. But the two guys are the ones actually buying the house. Mm -hmm. um, so exactly, exactly what you said. And we referred them to our internal the legal team because they're using them to help purchase. And they did, had mm -hmm. that discussion with them about... Uh, how they're going to purchase it and who owns how much and all that sort of stuff, which again, is a conversation. You need to be open and honest yeah. and have that conversation ahead of time so that you're not running into problems down the road. Right. And then we send them to you and they get approved and all that sort of stuff. That's amazing. And, and mm -hmm. assuming that they tapped into their RSP yep. home buyer withdraw, as well as the national housing program too, um, mm -hmm. as resources uh, to help them out. So um, I really enjoy working with the first time home buyers and yeah. also um, anybody in between, of course, but it's, it's good because you spend time with them, educating them even on things like what a qualifying rate is versus the rate I'm going to give you. Mm. Um, that's another big question. Why yeah, so at this rate? This stress test too, yeah. Yeah. Can I buy this? Where at this rate, I get another 50,000 out of my purchase power or whatever the figure mm. is. And it, it's interesting because we're the specialists in this field. Yep. So we have to make sense of all these moving parts for our clients. Yep. And absolutely. And that's kind of my, always my recommendation. I know there's a lot of different people at the, like at a bank, like CIBC um, mm -hmm. and there's financial advisors and then there's a bunch of different roles that different people play. But I generally speaking, like to steer people towards the actual mortgage specialists because mm -hmm. it's the kind of thing, obviously that you do day to day and you have yeah. the most experience on it. And while everyone else is well-versed in, you know, helping people with their finances and stuff, the mortgage specialist usually knows all the ins and outs uh, knows how to do the applications up and, and knows how to deal with things like CMHC and underwriters and all the other things involved, right? Someone mm -hmm. with as much experience as you have there is the perfect resource. Um, like I said, I was a first time home buyer when, when we first met. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah, just being able to educate everybody on what's what kind of government programs are available, land transfer tax rebates, what kind of incentives the bank might have for first time home buyers and, mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff. So that's awesome. Um, mm -hmm. What other kind of things are you seeing like in the markets there with people and obviously concerned about rates and, and again, some people looking to refinance and stuff. What other things do people sort of approach you with on a day to day basis kind of thing? Um, a, a lot of questions around the refinances, is it worth my time 
and money mm -hmm. to refinance, break my mortgage and move on to these new rates that are, are currently available. And we have some great calculators and tools that we have access to that we can give the clients like apples to apples comparison of here's why it is worth your while. That's generally the answer right now. Um, it also depends the source of the, of the mortgage, where it's coming from. Um, some, some third party lenders have other fees built into it that may not be, um, you know, built into the upfront costs right. when they get that mortgage. And some, you know, have clauses. I've seen a clause where if the primary lender is still alive, you are not allowed to transfer this mortgage. Right. I, in my whole career, I honestly have seen that once and it was a no go. Yeah. Um, it was a, a firm out in Toronto who shall not be named. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and the clients were devastated because they really needed that refinance opportunity. Right. Um, I did find another solution for them at the end of the day, but sure. they didn't realize, and so they had advice that wasn't for them. Right. Up I front. think that's a big component too, and I know we've discussed this before many times over the years that we've worked together. Um, it's the terms and conditions that ultimately, like everybody's really fixated on rates. And definitely yeah. people want competitive rates. They don't want to have to spend money that they don't have to spend kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it's, it's those hidden terms and conditions and things, the penalties that you may or may not have to pay if you try to mm -hmm. sell the property or buy a different property that really come into play a lot of the times. Like I remember yeah. um, in the past, like having dealt with clients who one reason or another, and usually not a bad reason, they're just moving up to a larger home or something like that, but they were locked into a really low rate that seemed amazing. But then when they went to sell the property, the mortgage wasn't, you weren't able to port the mortgage. Um, there's a bunch of penalties and they ended up paying literally upwards of 15 to $18,000 mm -hmm. in, in like a penalty just to break this mortgage so that you could sell your house and then mm -hmm. move, even if you intended to stay with the same institution, that penalty still applied, right? And that's mm -hmm. something they just probably should have been aware of. Somebody, you know, you could put some of the blame on the, on them, and mm -hmm. but a lot of the blame usually is a lot of these sort of, um, not CIBC, of course, not, this isn't who I'm discussing, but uh, yeah. I've seen some very predatory practices um, among some third, third party, some yeah. kind of other private lenders and that sort of thing that, you know, they'll dangle these really super low rates to attract people. And it's, it's not quite a bait and switch, uh, but these things are hidden in there so that if you ever try to break this mortgage before you finish paying it in 25 or 30 years, for whatever reason, um, these penalties come into play, right? And you really, you know, the money you saved on that low rate just disappears and then some in the penalties that you have to pay, right? And that's And, and it goes back to getting good advice up front, transparent mm -hmm. advice, and let the buyer beware though. Because yeah. you need to know the contract you're getting into. Yeah. Um, and you, you need to be cognizant of what your options are, especially right now. Yeah. And ultimately, if, they, if they're, if they again, if they're advised and they're educated, same as when we do home inspections. Like my, I, I tell people all the time, when we do home inspection, the job of the home inspector or my role there isn't to tell you whether or not you should buy the house. Mm -hmm. It's really just to educate you as to what it is you're buying. And then it's up to you to decide like, you know, are you okay with buying this, accepting it the way that it is and the condition that it's in, the work you might have to do. Same with the mortgage, you know, ultimately, you know, as long as you're educated and you know what you're getting into, you know, we're all adults here. You make a decision as to whether you want to proceed and sometimes you roll the dice. <laughs> you just, hopefully right. things work out for you, right? But generally right. speaking, I like to refer them to people like yourself who can sit them down and really go over things thoroughly. I know you're conscientious and you've got some integrity there <laughs> that you don't want to steer people the wrong way. Mm -hmm. uh, that's so true. that's why I like working with people like you. That's what I do. Thank um, you. Where are we going now? I know we've, uh, do you want to talk about the Remax partnership or do you have something sure. else to discuss first? I'll give you I'll give you some some teasers on that one, no problem. Sure. So I, um, I will mention, this is the big announcement. I don't know if it's a big announcement. Oh, it's already out there, but Remax roll. has a, uh, yeah, drum roll, uh, has a national partnership now with CIBC. So Remax, uh, uh, not Remax Canada, it's Remax Integra and Remax Canada. There's two big uh, franchisees, but we have a national partnership with CIBC. So mm -hmm. in the coming months, years, however long this partnership goes on for, there's a bunch of things coming down the pipe. So what, is a, what does a partnership with CIBC mean for, for everybody out there? 
Sure. Um, so first and foremost, this is new and exciting that we've been able to acquire this. Uh, we're really excited because of the Remax presence in, in across Canada. Um, the national scope is amazing. Um, I, I've worked with clients that in Hamilton that have purchased pro properties in Vancouver and on the East Coast, and they've all been Remax agents, which is amazing. I think that um, the program for the agents to sign up is absolutely free. Um, I have more information I can send out to you if you want to reach out in regards to that. It's really one of those things that there is no reason not to sign up. There is no obligation. There is no renewal fees, monthly fees, anything associated with it. It's about developing that relationship with our real estate agents and um, rewarding the relationship through certain incentives. Like right now, um, we have... Uh, launch for Remax agents only up until March 31st. We have special pricing for your clients. And again, reach out to me if you want to know more about it. Sweet. And I'm super willing to share that information because sure. it's super exciting to see um, this aggressive type of offers. So the offers are very, are very succinct to um, building that rapport and building the relationship with the Remax um, group as a whole. Brokers own, broker owners as well. If you haven't signed up, I'm not sure what the hesitation is. Um, <laughs> because again, it's completely free. There's nothing involved with it. It's all about right. appreciating and rewarding and recognizing relationship building through our partnerships. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to keep that to that level because there, yeah. there is um, more information that, that I could mm -hmm. send out to you um, and you could uh, review at your yep. own pace. And Absolutely. I do have a few Remax agents that have signed up as well. Absolutely. Well, all I'll do is, like I said, uh, for anybody who's interested, who's watching, you can put comments below or you can message me directly. Sure. Um, we'll, we'll get Linda's contact info for you in a second. But uh, again, this is a partnership that we're having with CIBC. And mm -hmm. hopefully we can leverage that partnership to get some perks and incentives for our clients. So yeah. again, it's uh, stuff that's being offered by CIBC. And I guess Remax is going to be helping out doing some things as well. And then we're just helping people sort of, um, not just with mortgages, I think it's just national. So I mean, there might be some other things that get tied into it over time. Mm -hmm. um, some other incentives there for you to, to have a look at. CIBC and we'll see what they can do for you and help you uh, in terms of your home purchase or your refinance or whatever it is that you might need to be doing financially. Um, so that's awesome. I'm, I'm excited. Yep. I want to yeah. see, uh, hopefully we can, a lot of things like this is, is the way I normally see it, just being able to collaborate with mm -hmm. uh, people like yourself from CIBC and hopefully just, you know, making use of that resource of all the knowledge and everything else. Like CIBC has been around forever. I mean, if you're a Canadian, you know who CIBC is. Um, right. So yeah, and, and they're fairly, you know, well-respected and trusted institution in Canada. So again, to just be able to leverage that relationship and get some, some expertise just to come on and talk like this and help educate mm -hmm. our clients and all that stuff is fantastic. So I'm looking Absolutely. forward to it. I think it's going to be yep. very interesting to see what you and I can get up to in the future. Awesome. <laughs> With my, my radio voice Your and radio, my radio voice. face. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what's, I, I, the, the, what's the best way for people if they want to get in touch with you? Uh, email, phone, like what's, what's your contact info? If for anybody who's watching, we'll eventually have it up on the screen here somewhere if you're watching on YouTube or watching an edited video, but what's the best way for people to get in touch with you to discuss whether it's refinance or mortgages or anything like that? Mm -hmm. So there, there's a few ways you can reach out to me. My phone number is direct to me. I don't have an assistant or work in an office per se. So my direct number is 905-719-8484. I maybe should have had a pizzeria with that phone number, there but you go. <laughs> I'm going to be a mortgage specialist. Um, again, 905-719-8484. My email address is my first name, Linda, L-I-N-D-A dot Sinelli, S-A-N-E-L-L-I at CIBC.com. And I'm, I'm available and I'm flexible anytime you want to discuss um, whatever your situation is, because mm -hmm. There's a lot of tools and collaborations that I'm able to help you with. Um, also, you can find me on our CIBC.com website. You can search me up and check my profile. I'm really there. Um, so <laughs> you'll see me there. And I was going to also mention in yeah. terms of 
some specials we have. And again, sure. I can't advertise per se, but I will mm -hmm. say this one's super time limited um, applications up until February 19th. It was a short window of time um, mm -hmm. opportunity that we're offering. So reach out if you want to know more about it. Uh, we're out there to compete, which I love um, mm -hmm. because I've worked uh, at a couple institutions, um, I, I, I really appreciate the CIBC turnaround time responding to what's happening around us. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's yeah. becoming more and more critical to just need answers relatively quickly. Um, I know things in the real estate market are changing almost weekly. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then just things in the economy, uh, you know, opening up, shutting down, or shutting down again, opening up again. And mm -hmm. it's, it's things are just in flux everywhere. So people need um, reliable advice and they need it quickly. And as Linda's mentioned, she's a mo mobile mortgage advisor. So uh, she can, uh, she does work by Zoom, she does by phone, obviously, and she, you know, can visit the various CIBC locations all around Hamilton into the Niagara region, right? You work out that way. Not, not, well, we're not, uh, with COVID, I better clarify, we're not allowed in the banking centers right now yes. due to the COVID restrictions, but I support the greater Niagara, Hamilton, Stony Creek, yep. Grimsby area. Um, eventually we'll get back in there. Um, yes, but of course. We don't have our green light yet. Once we're allowed, she will yes. meet you there <laughs> safely and all that sort of stuff. But otherwise, yeah. in the meantime, except by phone, by Zoom, uh, Linda's available to kind of discuss all this kind of stuff with you, give you some advice, and we'll have all her contact information, as I mentioned up here. And again, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, they'll be down in the comments below. Uh, so you can quickly get access to her and uh, find out about these super sure. secret time limited specials. You better hurry <laughs> up <laughs> because they are exciting. And like I said before, I really appreciate how CIBC quickly um, repositions um, itself for our clients. Yeah. I know what they are and I'm telling you now they're pretty good. So message me or message Linda and we'll, we'll fill you in. We're just, exactly. you know, we're somewhat limited sometimes in what we can say, but we can tell you privately though. <laughs> and I appreciate Tony, you coming on. Huh? I, Tony, I have a couple dates I want to put out there to oh, sure. everyone Absolutely. listening or Every watching time, out knock there. Knock yourself out. So I'm doing a first time home buyer seminar on March 16th and March 18th. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm working in partnership with uh, our one of our money in specialists, as you mentioned before, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of collaboration with our specialists around us. And I'll have more details. We're aiming, it's going to be an evening mm -hmm. and it's going to be virtual um, given everything that's going on. And there's no cost for anybody to join us. And there is limited um, limited registrations because of capacity okay. on sure. on virtual media. So mm -hmm. I will send you more details about that when I have my um, invitations ready. Awesome. I will yeah. post it on Facebook and Instagram and everywhere. So you'll all be able to register there and tune into that event too. get all yeah. have all your question answered, all that sort of stuff. Anything so keeping else? in mind, yeah, mm -hmm. with the first time home buyer, I, I, I challenge everyone watching and listening to expand their mind as to who that is. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. your first time actual home buyer. It could be your person who's actually downsizing in the yeah. market because they've been in the market so long and lived in the same home so long. Again, we don't know if they need financing or not at the 20, 30 year range when they're you know, ready mm -hmm. to downsize. Um, but do they know what the mortgage application process looks like? Yeah. Yeah. As I always say it's first time or first time in a long time. Yeah. And just I like that. Of, That's good. Can I yeah, use that? Get your, get your, ah, go on. <laughs> Get yourself like ca caught up on the way things are happening. Right. Uh, definitely. And there's a lot of people, again, we run into them all the time. Um, spouses of people or just people, like you said, have been living in their homes for 40, 50 years. And they just really haven't had to even think about um, mortgage financing or buying or selling a property or anything like that. For, so they just don't right. know. And, you know, the, the basic idea is the same. Like they want to buy a house or they want to sell a house. Yep. But the way we go about doing it, the way you qualify for financing and stuff has changed significantly in the last 10, mm -hmm. 20, 30 years. Uh, so yeah, definitely bring yourself up to speed. And, and again, there's really no silly questions, right? I mean, it's just, no. you, you need to get the information, get yourself educated, which is really 90% of the job that we do is just educating people as to what options are out there and then helping yeah. facilitate you know, whatever it is that they choose to do, right? I and mean, that's really what we do. Um, so yeah, I do. Anything else you want to mention? 
Any surprise? No, I think I think that's it for now. Um, any, any grandkids? Any great grandkids? Any? What's going on? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> well, there you go. It'll be a surprise for you too. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> No, okay, thank you for coming on. I do appreciate it. I don't, like I said, we don't want to make this relatively quick. Nope. We've been here for about yeah. half an hour or so, so we're good. And I uh, hope you Tony. have a great weekend. And at you some point enjoy. in the future, we'll bring you on and update everybody as to what's going on. Awesome. I appreciate, uh, I appreciate your partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. That was my uh, good friend. I, I'm, I'm allowed to call her a good friend and a business contact. I don't know if my colleague is correct. She works at CIBC, so they are obviously independent from us, even though we do have a new national partnership between Remax and CIBC. So hopefully we'll be able to get together in future episodes and just bring in some more market updates as to what's going on, any special promotions that are happening, etc. cetera. Uh, feel free again to contact Linda, linda.sinelli at CIBC.com. I'll have all the information in the contact info below. And if you want to just private message me, leave a comment below, I'll get in touch with you and I can fill you in on whatever the incentives are that uh, we are partnering with CIBC to offer to our clients. So I do appreciate you all tuning in. I love you all. You know, I really do. I hope you have a great weekend. There's a ton of snow coming to the Hamilton area this afternoon, apparently, but uh, stay warm, stay safe, uh, stay happy, do the best you can, love each other. Be happy, like I said, and I will talk to you again soon on The Lunchbox. Mm -hmm.